We are dealing with a crisis. Officials scrambling to respond. Why people find so much toilet paper? I, like so many of my fellow Americans, have been stuck at home during this pandemic. And one of the things I've been doing a lot is watching movies online. But there's one movie that I just can't seem to find anywhere, and it's not some movie from the 1920s or some lost film. It's a very recent movie from 1999. It's Kevin Smith's Dogma. I give you the Buddy Christ. Even if you wanted to buy this movie online, you're going to be shredding a lot of cheddar, my friend. I mean, look at these prices online here. Look at Walmart. Look at eBay. Look at this. Why is it so expensive? How did it get this way? Is Kevin Smith trying to Christmas special this movie? Is the Catholic Church suppressing the film like a bunch of Scientologists? Well, it turns out it's a little less dramatic, but it does involve the Satan of cinema himself. Back in 1999, Kevin Smith had already made three classic films. Clerks, Mallrats, and while it certainly didn't age very well, Chasing Amy. Yeah! Smith's go-to guys were the Weinstein brothers at Miramax since they bought his first film, Clerks, at Sundance in 1994. So when Kevin Smith wanted to release his next film, Dogma, he went back to them. <laughs> and I fucking put up a lot of money for you two assholes, you know, and... <laughs> and uh, he ain't joking. Miramax, however, was owned by Disney. And religious folks were not happy that the family-friendly company was releasing what they deemed an anti-Catholic film. The new movie Dogma opens tonight and it's already generating a huge amount of controversy and so is its creator, Kevin Smith, who lives right here in New Jersey. The Catholic League spearheaded a campaign against the film. We had 300,000 pieces of hate mail and three death threats. And protests, including this one in Eatontown, New Jersey. I don't think it stands for, uh, for anything positive. What does it stand for? I don't know, but I've been told not good. The Weinsteins eventually bought the film from Disney, which wanted nothing to do with the movie anymore, and self-released it through Lionsgate. As soon as Disney wasn't involved, the Catholic League disappeared, considering it a victory, although the movie was released anyway. Disney didn't get flack, Kevin Smith got his movie released, and the Weinsteins earned a boatload of money. Everyone won, right? Wrong. Time goes on. It keeps slipping. Into the future. And eventually, it's 2008. Kevin Smith makes, not through Miramax now, but the Weinstein Company, Zack and Miri, or Zack and Miri make a porno. But no matter the name, it was a flop. And Weinstein doesn't tolerate flop from fat funny man. Their relationship soured, and they didn't talk for nearly a decade. Kevin Smith eventually tried to get Dogma back, but no one at the Weinstein Company ever responded, so it doesn't really seem like they really cared. Until one day in 2017, Kevin Smith gets a phone call from Harvey Weinstein himself. Hello. He says he wants to get Dogma out there to the people. The fans. People love Dogma. That maybe there, there would be a sequel. People love sequels. How exciting, right? Kevin Smith was very excited. And my heart leapt. I couldn't believe it. I was like, he's offering me a dogma sequel? Oh my God, this is fucking amazing. I was like, that would be amazing. I was like, all right, let's start talking about it. I'll get back to you in a week. But sorry, Kevin. Weinstein was Weinsteined one week later. In retrospect, Kevin Smith thinks that his phone call was nothing more than an attempt to gather supporters before the story broke, which I totally believe. Weinstein was playing mind games with, reminding Kevin who really owned his movie. He was dangling it over his head so that maybe he wouldn't say in public that he was ashamed to have ever been involved with Harvey Weinstein. I'll fuck around with him. I'm not, I'll come there and I'll have your legs broken. I'm kidding, but I'm not. You know what I mean? <laughs> like maybe that there was a chance that he could own Dogma or make a sequel or even re-release it if he said nothing and waited for the whole thing to blow over. I give Kevin a lot of credit for what he said at the risk of never seeing his movie again. I just wanted to make some fucking movies, that's it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, that's why I came. That's why I made Clerks, like, I, and no fucking movie is worth all this. Like, my entire career, fuck it, take it. Like, it's wrapped up in, in something really fucking horrible. So what I'm gonna do from now until the fucking day I die, I'm gonna give 2,000 bucks a month to women in film. And hopefully that just goes to people that get to make shit without having to deal with some fucking animal saying, here's the price. Kevin Smith is the type of guy who loves the industry of movie making. He's been screwed over, but just isn't cynical. He just always looks for the good in things. He embodies the Hollywood dream, and it's a shame that he doesn't own this film, a film that he puts so much hard work into. Last year, 2019, was the 20th anniversary of the film, and he couldn't even celebrate it. 
Hopefully, one day, Dogma will get the re-release that it deserves. And I can watch this thing on Netflix already. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed the video, consider subscribing. Stay safe, and stay healthy.